Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video for a gentleman called Sean. Now, Sean put a message on a video that I put out this morning, which was around how have you set up your Ranger T1? Now, there's already a maiden video done of this, but I wasn't sure whether or not to kind of show you how to put it together, because actually I kind of showed how I kind of put things inside models like this. This is actually the He Wing uh, F01. Uh, this is a very similar layout. So again, a Maytech F411 WSE here at the back. Uh, Maytech buzzer, I would always recommend putting in a Maytech buzzer. If you've got a DJI system, it just will uh, beep and let you know of any problems. It'll also triple beep when you get a GPS lock, incredibly handy. GPS wherever you can get it. In this particular one, I put the air unit right here at the front uh, with big heat sinks front and back. And because the little bit of airflow that you get through the nose, it's just enough to stop it getting hot. So I had a similar idea when I came in to build this thing. Now, as you can see, the actual width of the bay is not quite as big. So I had the similar idea. I thought, well, what I can do is I can use the same F411 WSE um, from Maytech. However, you need a very specific target. I'll put the link to the video and a link down below the description that explains about how to do that. And then what you do is you lose your LED pin, which is a bit of a shame for this model because you lose the ability to drive the addressable LEDs at the ends of this PMP version, but you get the on-screen display, which is worth its weight in gold. Now, in terms of the positioning of everything, when it comes out of the box, uh, where the air unit is in mine is typically where the kind of power distribution board is. And that is kind of right under where the central gravity needs to be. The CG is just about where the spar runs through. I'd say just in front of it, about five or six millimeters in front of it is where I found is the real sweet spot. So I had to think about how to do that. So if the flight controller was here, then I'd have to have the air unit behind it. Now that became a bit of a problem. Now I've used, hopefully you can see here, a 20 um, centimeter extension cable from the air unit light to the camera that's in the nose. I've just popped my camera in here rather than have it on some kind of mount on the top. Now the limit that I could get with that cable um, wouldn't quite let me get behind the flight controller and then wouldn't let me get every, all the electronics far enough back for me to have enough room here at the front. So in the end, I swapped it around. So I moved the power distribution unit that comes in it. I kind of slid it back, uh, put the uh, F411 WSC on top. Uh, mounted it using my standard trick of uh, double-sided foam tape. Uh, this one I first got it was a roll that was kind of that big. I use it for everything. It's fantastic. If you get the stuff that's used to hold car number plates on, um, that's, I find, some of the stickiest stuff you can get. Now, the idea with me was uh, to get the air unit at the back because then the antenna could come up in here. Um, it didn't quite work out because this air unit is now a bit further. There isn't really a place to put the antenna. So uh, it, it's probably not a bad thing because the GPS, I just popped it in here underneath uh, this little cover at the back and that's a beautiful spot for it. There is actually already a trench underneath that you can wire the, uh, put the cables through. That comes in here into uh, UR1 on the flight controller. And then the elevator that comes in through the tail goes into one of the outputs and the ailerons, which are on a Y cable, come onto the other output. It's a very, very simple setup. So in terms of the antenna, what I had to do was I've made a little cutout. Hopefully you can see it on the video, a little cutout there. And the way it works is that the back canopy goes on, the antenna gets caught on there. And then the front piece kind of goes over the whole thing. And as that locks in place, it also locks the antenna in place too. Now, the only issue I found while I've been flying it is that the air unit itself does get a little bit warm because by default, there isn't a ton of airflow. There's a little bit of airflow that comes in through here. There are 3D printable parts available that you can print out that will kind of pull air through. Unfortunately, I'm having to use this mount here that's for the Cadix Peanut camera. Uh, if you add the Cadix Peanut camera, 
then I have to put about another 15 grams of weight on the tail to make it all balanced. So you add about 50 grams in total. Um, but because of that airflow issue, I did a couple of other mods as well, just to show you. Uh, this is a 3D printable, it's a flat piece that folds up. Um, the uh, link to it is on my Thingiverse page. Um, but the idea is there's um, kind of an airflow that directs the air down onto the air unit. And there's also an exhaust cut in this back piece. So the idea is there is a bit of airflow through the entire canopy. That's the only downside I've found uh, with having the air unit inside like this. These things run hot um, just all the time. So that's how I've put it together. In terms of the wiring, the wiring for the Matek F411 WSE is exactly as I have talked about. Uh, let me just plug it into iNav and I'll show you how I've got it set up in there. Again, no particular drama. It's all very, very standard stuff. I've put iNav 4 on this only because um, it's the latest and greatest version and I'm collaborating on a video or two that's gonna be on the channel soon. So let me jump on the computer and kind of go through this. So let's click on connect. Uh, here we have the plane, so that's all moving on the table. Uh, we've got problems, the GPS isn't being seen and that's absolutely fine because you know what? Unfortunately, the GPS isn't powered from the USB with this particular flight controller. So when I set it up, I did exactly the same stuff that I do on all of my iNav builds. See my iNav for beginners series and also my iNav 3.0 plane setup. iNav 4.0, all the basics are exactly the same. The project are doing a fantastic job of making it so that they don't change things too drastically every time you set stuff up. So went through the calibration, added the mixer. Now there is an option, of course, to add a differential thrust. Uh, that means that this plane doesn't have a rudder. You can actually have a yaw by having one motor speed up and kind of pull the plane around. That is available uh, in here in um, airplane with differential thrust. I haven't set it up. The reason for that is that one of my friends has been flying this exact model with differential thrust on and his, uh, I think his P game was probably a bit high on one of his very first attempted landings. The um, iNav tried to affect the yaw. The yaw was mixed into the uh, props and it just kind of pulled it out of the sky. So I wouldn't worry about that. And everything else is pretty standard. So nothing really changed on here. So that was just load and apply. In terms of outputs, um, outputs is pretty standard stuff. I'm using standard ESC protocol. Uh, this is the PMP version of the model. So it comes with the ESCs. LVC is turned off. They're in the right direction. So uh, this prop turns in that direction. That prop turns in that direction, but triple check on yours before you go and fly. I've done the servo refresh rate, it's 50 Hertz. That's fine for pretty much all servos. And then um, the only other thing I've done is I have lowered my rates. Now the way I've got the linkages set up on this, I'm going to the second hole from the outside. Uh, it's probably better, I would recommend, if you're building yours, go to the very outside hole, then you can get your rates up to about 70%. Um, full throws on this model is a little bit too aggressive. You only want eight to 10 millimeters of travel in manual mode. That's where you need to kind of check it and set it up. So you might need to find that your rates need to change. Because on this model, Servo 2 is elevator, I think. Servo 3 is aileron or the other way around. These uh, servos 4 and 5 aren't used. In terms of ports, uh, standard stuff for a Matek F411 WSC set with the DJI HD system. That has GPS on UART 1 and it has the DJI FPV VTX stuff set up on Surf Serial 1. And that means you use those two pins at the back. One is the LED pin and the other one um, is one of the other pins that's available. And it just means you've got another transmit and receive pair on Soft Serial 1 that can run the DJI FPV on-screen display. The rest of the configuration is exactly as you would expect. Nothing particularly um, exciting in here. The only thing I will kind of draw your attention to, I always turn on continuously trim servos on fixed wing. That means if you go into manual mode, it's beautifully set up. And it always makes sure that the permanently enable launch mode fixed wing. I love launch mode. Launch mode is epic. Uh, you'll see in the Maiden video how well it works. The Maiden video, it just flew straight into the air, straight and level, just epic. Uh, fail safe 
is set to uh, GPS return to home. Um, PID tuning, I would, uh, it's a very basic set, so don't worry about that. I'd go and auto tune yours once you've got it set up how you like. The PID tuning as it comes out of the box from iNav4 will allow you to have a very nice flight with it. And then the only other thing in here, in terms of your modes, it's all exactly what you'd expect. So I have horizon mode is the kind of the default switch position. Then I have manual in the middle. The top position is um, usually acro. Um, that allows me to do the tuning. Once the tuning is all done, then I tend to fly it as horizon, manual, and GPS loiter. Those are the three modes that I tend to use unless I'm doing uh, missions. So that's it really. The only other thing to mention um, is a video that I did a couple of weeks ago on this very subject. In iNav4, and I think it was in iNav3 as well actually, when you go into the on-screen display, you can um, use the uh, craft name to do some cool stuff. And also you can actually choose exactly what you want. And there's a little switch in here that allows to hide unsupported elements. So craft name will give you things like short warnings. Um, in fact, I probably need to set that up on here. I meant to do that. Let's do that here while I'm on the video. So go into configuration, jump down into craft name. I only want warnings. There we go. So that'll basically just give me warnings in that craft name area um, so that if something like GPS isn't locked or whatever, it'll absolutely show me. That's a really useful thing. The only other thing I'll mention about this, uh, again, I cover a lot of this in the Maiden video for those of you that are going to watch both of these. Um, the configuration, there is the fixed wing level offset setting, which is the fixed wing level pitch trim. Let me show you how I've got that set. I would recommend for this model with the central gravity. Um, so the, the way I've got it set is this, for the central gravity. If you kind of dangle it from the front part of this handle, uh, that is pretty much perfect. If you dangle it from the rear part of the handle, uh, my friend and I found that the stalls are more aggressive. It won't fly as slowly. Uh, try and get it just on the front of there that's a great place because if you see that's kind of where the cg is so you kind of want to be slightly in front of that kind of post so i would go at the front of there and it's a much better spot so if we just say on the computer here get so i've set it for four degrees uh in reality it probably needs to be about 3.9 something like that but again your kind of auto level We'll sort that out for you. So Sean, hopefully that's interesting. That's how I've set it up. The thing is, there's no right or wrong way for you to set this model up. There's quite a bit of room in here. I'm gonna fly it with a 3S lithium ion pack. This will fly with 2S. It's a very sedate model on 2S. You know, you're gonna need a very calm day for it. Uh, and it will also fly on 4S as well if you want it to go like stink. But I think 3S is a good compromise. And on a 3000 3S lithium, um, ion battery um, which kind of gives it a nice central gravity that will give me kind of 20 minutes flight time so hopefully that's useful stay around and I'll show you the maiden footage and go through some more of the setup tips about how everything was done Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.